my favorite uh, wars to look at and study is actually World War II. The scale of combat and the massive suffering of people and the amount of resources used in this war was ginormous. So, which also brings in to the interesting topics of human behavior and military tactics. There are a plethora of games made that covered this conflict, including Company of Heroes and, of course, Men at War. But today I will cover the Order of Battle. Specifically, I will cover the Pacific Campaign. I myself have only completed the British Campaign called the Burma Campaign, the Rising Sun Campaign, which is Japanese uh, efforts during World War II, and the Morning Sun Campaign, which involves taking the Japanese side in the Second Sino Japanese War. Right after that, if you have the Order of Battle game, it is free but the individual campaigns you need to pay for. So one thing good is that it gives you a choice of holding whatever faction you like during World War II. But one big drawback is that by chopping up the game into many pieces, it seems like a cash grab. So it's very expensive to get all the pieces together so you can play all the campaigns released by the developer. So I decided to um, purchase the Pacific campaign because it is not covered very much in Hollywood and not a lot of games cover it. Like you look back at Company Heroes 1 to 2, it doesn't, none of them cover the Japanese side or the Chinese side of the conflict. Now, Order of Battle is a turn-based game. means, basically, unlike real-time strategy, you combat with your enemy in a series of turns. One thing good is at the start of every mission, you are given the historical context on why you are fighting this mission. One thing really good is the varied terrain. You'll be fighting from the seas of the Pacific to the jungles of Malaya to the rough terrain of China. Is simply represented in a series of hex and grids, and the units are also given simple graphical representations. But don't let that simplicity fool you. Success is more than ensuring numerical superiority over the opponent. It's about making use of the terrain around you, and to ensure that your troops are well supplied and not cut off. At the same time, you can cut off the enemy to prevent any escape routes and preventing their elite army from being resupplied. And mission conditions may change along the way. For example, during my attack on Pearl Harbor, I was suddenly given a third wave of attack planes without any warning, and this better helped me accomplish my objectives of bomb bombing the oil fields of Pearl Harbor. And this game lends significance to completing the optional objectives more than making it more than bragging rights. For example, if you disable the oil fields and the battleships of Pearl Harbor, you will not face these battleships again in subsequent missions, meaning that the better you do in the mission, the easier the following missions will be. Lastly, it is very important to keep your units alive because your units will gain veterancy which you can port over to the next mission. Fresh units do lack the firepower and um, durability of veteran units. So to give yourself an easier time in the later missions which can be very challenging and the objectives can be very far flung to the other end of the map, please remember to keep your units alive and to deploy them in the next battle. Now the flaws. Other than the simple graphics, the map of Order of Battle can be very big and the units move very slowly and there's no way to make these animations faster. This is not so bad at land battles but in sea and air battles, it can take very very long time for the mission to be finished. Lastly, despite a lengthy tutorial, the game itself doesn't explain much and you sort of got to figure out a lot of the mechanics by yourself. Lastly, I'd like to praise this game for giving what-if scenarios if you perform really well. For example, the Japanese campaign may end up 
with the invasion of Australia, provided you defeat the Americans and Australians at the Battle of Horror Sea and Midway. Trying my new 7 point rating system for the first time, I give this game a rating of... Listen! It is not the best game in the world, but it's definitely worth a try. Although the game is simple to play, its lengthy missions make it hard to recommend to anybody except fans of strategy and World War II. Thank you everyone for watching and please remember to subscribe to the channel and give me any feedback and comments below. Thank you and goodbye.